Welcome back to Jim's Jeeps. Today we're going to be replacing the constant velocity axles on this WJ. It's a 2004 4.0 liter four wheel drive. Uh, she's, uh, she's still a pretty good rig. It's got a few issues here and there. And uh, one of the things we've noticed is there's a few, a few problems with the front drive axle, which is fairly common in these vehicles. Certainly something that a Jeep owner can fix right in your driveway. It's not that complicated of a job. And uh, we'll be doing that here in, in a few steps. offset in this case to the driver's side and it will jack a little bit unevenly but you'll still be able to jack the car just fine enough to get jack stains underneath. There are two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper pins in place. Need a pry bar. want to secure the caliper with a hook or a piece of wire so you're not hanging from the hose. mounting bracket is removed, you remove the rotor.
You see, we just put these on about two months ago. It's already starting to rust up. Do yourself a favor. When you do get the ones out you're going to fight with, make sure you put anti-seize around this collar right here. And also clean up the steering knuckle real well so that you won't have a rust jacking problem because they're nearly impossible to get out when they get highly corroded inside. So pull the, after you have all that off, you can pull the axle out gently. Support it with your hand from behind the knuckle so you're not scraping the splines just in case you were going to reuse it. And that's all there is to it. This is the constant velocity axle from the front of a 2004 WJ. We're going to replace it so we're not too concerned about keeping this one in good shape. They're pretty cheap. I think they're around $40 on rockauto.com. And they have great service, by the way. If you haven't tried Rock Auto, do that. Because it's an excellent, excellent company. If you can wait a few days for parts, you don't need it right away. It's a great way to save some money. So before you put it in, you probably want to lubricate the splines just so they're not going in dry. There's a little bit of remanufacturing oil. Actually, this is a brand new one. Just put a little bit on there. You get the splines kind of wet before you put it back in. And replacement is the same as removal. You want to put your hand behind the steering knuckle and kind of guide this in. And picture where the middle of the tube is because you don't want to hit that inner seal. If you knock the inner seal out, you're going to have a whole world of hurt to take the whole front axle apart to fix it. things I wanted to point out when I just had it in there I thought it was fully engaged on the differential carrier it was not we have the tone ring it has to be almost towards the back of the steering knuckle torque it down to 75 foot-pounds.
back up. The axle nut that came on the CV shaft was actually too large to uh, expose the hole where the cotter pin goes. In other, in other words, the nut didn't go down on it uh, far enough. So we replaced it. We put the OEM nut back on. Now we're going to torque that down to 175 foot pounds. Just run these in real quick. Just to snug them up and we'll torque them down to 100 foot pounds. We're finished with this side now. Both sides are exactly the same. The only difference is the length of the actual sh axle shaft itself. So we'll, we're going to torque these wheels down or these lug nuts down to 100 foot pounds right now. The other side is exactly the same the exception of the length of the axle shaft itself. Well, that's it, the job's complete. Fairly quick job, it should take you about a half an hour each side. So thanks for joining us on Jim's Jeeps today. If you, if you like this video and want to see more, like it, like it, and subscribe down below. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.